Hey guys, it's me, Absolute Habibi, and in this video, we're doing something a little bit different, and we're looking at the new developments coming to Europa Universalis 4, the game that I play the most on this channel. As you guys know, I play a lot of multiplayer, and I also play a lot of modded, but if you watch my Twitch streams, you'll see that I do play some vanilla single player, as well as sometimes we'll do multiplayer games every now and then. But the development of EU4 is still really important to me. So in December 13, Paradox announced three new idea groups coming to EU4, as well as changes to ideas, which we will go over. And also yesterday, they posted about a change to unit pips. We are going to go over these ideas. I'm going to give my thoughts about them. And then on the pips, we have a guest, Bertus Videos, who's going to also talk with me about what he thinks about the pip changes. And we are going to talk about um that in detail and about what unit pips that i will choose in the future so yeah the first thing is these three new idea groups and it's actually being presented to us by this guy named big boss if you guys don't know who this guy is he's actually was a developer of a mod the flavor universalis mod and if you actually look back in my discord and look at the promotions he was actually one of the people promoting his uh, mod on my discord which is something we totally promote on my server if you have a mod let me know and we can give you permission so you can be on this promotion page but um this is actually part of paradox pinto's uh strategy since i think it was leviathan they wanted to basically move the game to development to the community and um a really good change was they started hiring mod developers and one of them is big boss and um, he's uh, one of the guys, if you've played Fla Flavor Universalis, you can see that his little flair is being added to the game, and I'm all for it. Um, in the previous patch, there was more reforms, something that was already existent in his mod, Flavor Universalis. But yeah, uh, you can see that they mention it, and that they're trying to keep the bar of Lions of the North. And that's a good, that's a good thing to do, you know, keep the bar on a Lions of the North release. Good development, good stuff that isn't just in the DLC, but also for the game. And we can see they're adding three new idea groups. Um, so we're going to go through the idea groups, the three new ideas, um, and then we're going to go through the idea changes. By the way, there will be chapters, so you can just use those if you don't really care about some of the stuff I'm talking about. The first idea group we're talking about is infrastructure ideas. And I think a lot of YouTubers, maybe not a lot of YouTubers, but some YouTubers, as well as a lot of players in the MP community were talking about this idea group because they think that this is going to be like a meta shift for uh, EU4 in terms of multiplayer. So what ideas does infrastructure ideas have? So it's to start, we get a global prosperity growth and state maintenance modifier of 50%. That's pretty crazy, actually. Um, state maintenance, you might think like, man, I did barely spend on anything on state maintenance. It's not that big modifier. But if you actually have very high state maintenance, you can just run edicts in all of your provinces very uh, cheaply because edicts increase the cost of main, uh, state maintenance by 200%. So having a lot of state maintenance modifiers is really good um, if you are microing a lot of edicts. Global prosperity growth, it's really good. Prosperity is the reason why we always stay at least one stability. So we get prosperity growth, which gives us dev cost, manpower, goods produced in uh, that state. The next is build cost. So just construction cost. Um, uh, then we have build time. Um, and also they're going to add expand infrastructure costs. I think I'm guessing this is like a maybe. Expand infrastructure, um, I think is one of those underrated mechanics. Like some players are using it a lot, including myself. I actually use expand infrastructure a lot. And I talked about that in my tier list video where I've talked about ideas tier lists. And people were like, dude, governing capacity doesn't matter. Literally governing capacity doesn't matter anymore. You're stupid. And the thing is, the reason I realized, the reason why governing capacity still matters for me is because I use expand infrastructure a lot. If you don't know what expand infrastructure is, it is a mechanic in EU4 that lets you basically get a bunch of bonuses as well as dev cost, uh, tax, manpower, a bunch of bonuses, and you can stack it at the cost for governing capacity. If you're going really tall, this is amazing. If you are just trying to min-max your empire, it's also really amazing if you have the extra governing capacity. And with all of the added ways to deal with governing capacity in EU4, uh, like you can build state houses and courthouses in literally every single province because they don't take building slots anymore. You can also centralize state 
and also the buying more governing capacity in the late game is uh you can put modifiers to make it cheaper but expand infrastructure cost if the cost is just the admin cost for doing that not really a big deal but if it's the governing capacity cost then it's actually a big deal um I'm not sure because it doesn't really give the exact details here. It just says expand infrastructure cost. If it's just admin, meh. If it's just, if it's the governing capacity, oh my god, great. Um, next is movement speed 20%. Great. Movement speed is actually a great buff. And then this is not a mill idea group. So great. Um, you can move faster. Uh, you can reinforce faster. You can choose better battles. Uh, you can, if you have a big empire, movement speed is one of the nicest modifiers you can get. Envoy travel time, eh, meh, depends on, you know, where you are in the world. Global autonomy, pretty nice. Fort maintenance, 25%, pretty nice. Capital fort level one, uh, one extra level under capital fort, pretty good too. Uh, global allowed number of buildings, one. So this means that you get an extra building on every single province, extra building slot. That's pretty insane, depending on your size. If you're in somewhere like Siberia, or you have just a bunch of like really crap provinces, like in the Middle East as well, there's a lot of desert provinces. Um, if you have like a lot of mountain provinces, this can make it your land a lot better. You guys know how I feel about buildings. I think that you should be building them in both single player and multiplayer, it doesn't matter. They're really good um, uh, to build, and some buildings are better than others, but you should be building a lot of buildings. That should be part of your EU4 gameplay. Overall, in a nutshell, this seems this seems to me like a multiplayer meta um, idea group. You have dev costs in there, you have construction costs in there, you have state maintenance modifier, prosperity growth, you have movement speed, um, you have build time. Build time is actually pretty strong, um, especially when you're building manufactories. If you stack build time, you can get some insane build speed on manufacturing and get rich really fast. I actually have a video coming out where I stack build time really hard um, in a multiplayer game. That video is coming soon. But it's actually a very underrated modifier. A lot of people just like go like, ah, whatever. But it's actually a very nice modifier. Without even looking at the policies, this looks like a meta multiplayer idea group. Like you're going to go this at some point, I feel like. If it's going to be your first or second or third, I'm not really sure, but it could possibly be just looking at these changes. I assume that there also isn't dev cost still and economic ideas. Again, we'll look at the idea changes in the end here, but um, yeah, the dev cost is replaced with goods produced on economic. That's what I heard. So um, there, there isn't more dev cost. It's just changed to another thing. If we look at the policies though, the policies compared to economic are a lot, a lot weaker um actually the 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 army professionalism one looks pretty nice the army professionalism one looks pretty nice actually um but yeah the policies are very mid on this one the goods produce is nice i'm guessing this is with trade ideas so it's still uh, that's actually a better bonus than economic has with trade ideas so um and trade ideas is something that you take more in multiplayer than you do in single player. In single player, you use more um, trade companies. Uh, in multiplayer, you need more manpower. So you just need merchants without having to use trade companies. But um, the goods produced is pretty nice. Years for personal union integration sounds really good too. I don't know what the value is because it's dotted out. But this sounds pretty good depending on what nation you are. It just means that, because for personal union integration, you have to wait 50 years. Depends on how big the number is, this could be pretty nice, uh, depending on what kind of gameplay you are doing. And uh, this one is, uh, allows claims on border bordering, con uh, bordering claims. So if you make a claim, you can make a border claim, which already exists as an age bonus in the Age of Discovery. Um, that's just something interesting. Um, and then the development with colony finishing, I'm guessing that's expanish, uh, expansion. So that one could be also pretty good. But again, nothing really stands out to me. Just looking at these, nothing particularly stands out to me uh, with um, infrastructure ideas policies. But their ideas themselves are what puts them really hard. And I would say that this probably will become a multiplayer meta. What's cool though is that we can choose between this and economic for multiplayer meta. So good moves by Paradox. The thing is though, are these values too insane? And did they nerf economic too hard? 
but we'll look at the changes later and I'll give you my final opinion then. But right now, it seems that these infrastructure ideas are multiplayer meta. Next, we have the new Diplo idea group, Core Ideas group. And this one gives you legitimacy to uh, as a bonus or whatever equivalent of legitimacy, depending on your government type. Um, power projection from insults. This is a straight up double bonus. So you get, instead of getting 10 from a, um, a uh, big insult, uh, you get 20 and you get instead of five from a normal insult you get 10 um something pretty nice all state local loyalty equilibrium amazing um having a bunch of estate loyalty and being above 60 percent with all of your estates is a really nice bonus to have um reform prog progress growth 20 percent another really nice bonus especially now that there's new governments reform progress growth is even more important and I've talked about this in my tier list about how reform progress growth is a rare bonus and an underrated one too. Next, we have two monthly splendor, another very nice modifier and national focus five years. I believe on empires, it's 10 years on uh, kingdoms. It's 15 years on douches is 20 years. You can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but um, uh, five years is pretty nice. If you're an empire, uh, that's every five years you can change your focus um, and you can min max that better. And then uh, one prestige, pretty nice, I guess. Improved relations modifier, I guess, pretty nice. And more relation slots. The thing about this idea group is that it's just like all like pretty nice. Okay, pretty nice. Pretty nice. Okay. But there's nothing here that really like, okay, this is going to be meta. The meta for world conquest, meta for something. No, it just seems like there's a lot of really nice bonuses. And when looking at the policies, um, uh, 0. 0.5 yearly army professionalism 0. 0.5 that's a lot actually 0. 0.2 is is uh considerable uh when you stack with a bunch of stuff but 0. 0.5 a year that's 200 years to fully put your uh army professionalism but keep in mind you will drill keep in mind you will make generals note this 0. 0.5 yearly army profession looks a bit too strong hmm yeah that, that that's that's my my uh, my take on it a more reform progress growth with plutocratic could be a nice bonus with plutocratic and with divine gives construction costs could be a nice bonus together um but uh when i'm looking at it when i'm looking at it five core costs right here too um i don't know it could be i'm i could be completely wrong this is just my opinion uh from looking at these this doesn't look to be um super amazing it kind of just seems like a bunch of really nice mo uh, bonuses, but maybe that's all you need to be a good idea group. Maybe, uh, but the reform progress growth makes it, you know, reform progress growth, something that you want to get as early as possible, right? Because, you know, if it's the entire game and I don't know if this is a percentage or a base, if it's 20% or 0.2 in both cases, that's a considerable amount. It's probably just percentage, uh, probably. But yeah, that's my thoughts on core ideas. Not as much as infrastructure ideas, but um, you know, they don't look that good. And now mercenary ideas. Mercenary cost 10% and also maintenance 10%. Nice. Mill advisor cost 25%. Okay, you can get 90% discounted advisors for mill with this probably in vanilla. Well, you already can get that 90% discounted advisors in vanilla, by the way. But um, I think you have to rely on event. But um, yeah, you can get really cheap advisors in vanilla EU for... Loot amount and available province loot. Okay, something. 10% morale. Nice, nice actually. This makes it pretty nice. 0. 0.5 reserves organization. So I'm guessing that is 50% damage in your back row. Uh, morale damage. Okay, this is actually pretty good. This is actually really good. Um, means that your troops in the reserves are going to take 50% less morale damage. Wow, if I'm correct. Mercs costing no professionalism is also really nice. Okay, the thing is though, this is a mill idea though. And the only quality that we get on all of our troops is morale. Could it be really worth? I'm not really sure. Maybe if you're doing some kind of quantity build, but again, there's not really many quantity buffs in here. You know, you could just use a bunch of Merc stacks, I guess, because then the Mercs kind of have infinite manpower, kind of, with the Merc manpower buff. Recover army morale speed is also pretty nice. It means that you can re-engage faster. Um, also means that you can drill between battles like I have in the past. You know, get a little bit of drill bonus right before a battle. Um, 
but uh you know i actually kind of take it back could be possibly good i don't know actually i'm thinking about it and just like you get some nice bonuses and you get morale morale is very important and morale is going to be more important we're going to talk about that when we talk about the artillery why morale is so important then we look at um we look at the uh policies and the policies of merc ideas again there's nothing something there's 10 morale right there actually 10 morale that's pretty nice probably with religious ideas could be really good actually that is pretty good force march cards no power is also really good you don't need to get the age bonus <laughs> that's actually pretty good and uh vassal force limit contribution and can create client states Ooh, i might be going merc ideas a lot in my single player campaigns actually you know what i might be going merc ideas a lot in my single player campaigns get client states nice and early pretty insane um and also the force limit co contribution is pretty nice ship trade power um and then more mill advisor costs okay so you can just get dirt cheap advisors okay i think merc ideas are pretty good actually mercenary ideas i think in my single player campaigns they would probably be my most picked you can get like super discounted mill advisors really early depending on what um what groups you go i'm guessing i'm not i'm not sure what the policy is with this like what idea group it is and finally finally we're gonna look at uh well finally when it comes to ideas we're gonna look at the ideas the ideas changes um religious ideas remove stab costs and given religious unity i don't really like this change um because when you go religious ideas you tend to have really high religious unity anyways just because you're converting everything right so i don't know if having religious unity is my favorite change uh humanist change religious unity with max tolerance of heathens and heretics okay yeah you know this is basically like this is actually better tolerance of heathens and heretics is actually better than religious unity because you not only you do you get the you don't get the religious unity debuffs but you also don't get the provincial debuffs of intolerance so um this actually buffs humanist admin ideas removed merc costs and placed with admin advisor cost uh really good uh, admin ideas now getting buffed because their merc stuff got moved to mercenary ideas probably Remove Merc Maintenance and place with Max Promoted Culture is really good. Remove Interest. No! And place with Religious Stability Cost Modifier. Okay. This is a bit of a nerf. Uh, stab Cost Modifiers are nice, though. Having a lot of Stab Cost Modifiers are really nice, especially since, you know, even to this date in, this, uh, in Vanilla, I, uh, I see myself taking all three estate um, modifiers where you get, uh, you trade more, you, you have less uh, Stab Cost, for more advisor costs so you pay less for advisors for more stab cost um i always take that that so this could be pretty nice uh but it is a nerf because interest per annum is pretty good if, uh, well you know sometimes you're not taking that many loans so maybe it's nice in those cases but um less interest means more loans you can take and uh less uh, money you pay on those loans monthly then finally removed merc power and given state governing costs okay admin ideas are now like amazing Admin ideas are now just amazing. The slight nerf is doesn't change that they're amazing. Admin advisor costs, more promoted cultures, and now states governing cost. Wow, that's like just centralized state on all of your on all of your stuff. And again, you guys could be saying, oh, governing capacity doesn't matter anymore, noob. Like I never have issues with governing capacity. Well, me, I love using expanded infrastructure. So more governing capacity good and finally we have uh economic ideas they remove the construction cost so i'm guessing everything that they removed uh that they put in infrastructure ideas they put in economic ideas and if they did actually do that economic ideas actually got a lot worse and um they still have that five discipline with uh they still have that five discipline with quality ideas but um you know removing construction costs for monthly gold inflation and gold depletion chance uh increase interest to one instead of oh that's huge buff actually one interest is a lot one interest per annum is a lot 0.5 is already a lot one is double that so that's actually insane uh remove monthly autonomy and place with uh reduce inflation cost and autonomy chance cool down i don't know about this one reduce inflation cost kind of nice but autonomy chance cool down i'm guessing it means autonomy change cool down in that case it's also pretty good um especially in early game and mid game and especially in multiplayer when you have low crown lens all the time 
um, and then remove development costs and gives 10 goods produced. That's something that's been in multiplayer mods for like two years, three years now, but they're doing it now in, in vanilla. So cool. Very cool. Um, remove it from infrastructure ideas too. Just remove it. You, you already can get a lot of dev cost reduction in vanilla without ideas. You can. Um, people being like, man, I miss devving for five. Like it gets so stale when that's just like the most efficient thing that you can do is just be devving for like five and just make every single province like 20, 30 dev. Um, I don't think it should be a game mechanic. Uh, my personal opinion, I don't think it should be. Maybe there should be more mechanics of getting uh, development from other ways and dev costs should be nerfed and you can get development from other ways. That's just food for thought. I'd actually like that change a lot. And then finally, they talk about uh, events related to idea groups. Um, they're revisiting them, which is cool, which makes me think that maybe Paradox watches my videos. And if you are Paradox, you're doing a good job, okay? I think you're doing a good job. However, I think the move from less dev cost is good. And I think the move to uh, expand infrastructure is really good. And now I'll be talking about the new PIP change with a special guest star, uh, Bertus Videos, who is a mainly Spanish-speaking uh, streamer on Twitch. If you are a mainly Spanish speaker, he's got the best Twitch streams. Um, however, he does speak English, and if you talk to him in English, he uh, will talk back, of course um but yeah he's gonna be on my guest uh here and he's the other guy that will be talking when we talk about the pips someone had just asked why are they always changing combat because i think they're trying to find like a really good they're trying to find like what is really good with it because it's never been perfect i guess and it's never been really good either combat in eu4 I cannot, are you talking i cannot hear you no no i was just talking to chat someone's saying why are they changing combat again Combat definitely does need a change. Late game is broken right now in EU4. Yeah. But they haven't said anything about that, so I'm not sure. And, and pips are not going to change that. Pips are not going to change that, yeah. And ideas aren't going to change that. I'm surprised they haven't mentioned it at all, so... Do they... Do they is, it, is it intentional? Do they not know about it? I don't know. I really hope they don't just go back to, you know, neglect MP. It's all about single player anyways. No. Um, because, yeah, most pay people, they play single player. But I really think that a good multiplayer for Paradox game keeps people coming back. Like, the MP players, yes. they're the most consistent players. Like, they play the most amount of U4. Yeah, the... the... The statistics they they use uh, for games started, uh, I don't think they are realistic because even sometimes you play single player just to test MP and unload games on MP and stuff. So and yeah, people on multiplayer just um, play every week. Yeah, so, uh, they literally play well, every week. So they, they they create the communities. Most of them, I would say. Yeah, like all of the Paradox communities I'm in are for multiplayer. Yes. Not exactly. for discussing single player. I mean, I think they're I think they're renting that in part to multiplayer. Otherwise, I, I don't think they would be changing peeps or combat or whatever. You don't think so? Or for single player? Has, the player the players always talk has, about pips. Like whenever they, they talk yeah. about Ottomans, they're like, oh man, Ottoman pips, too OP. When like okay, reality is sure. like they just don't have enough troops. In single player, I mean yes. So yeah, I mean you even with uh, some pips change, uh, you should be able to manage against an AI. I would say. I think you, I think though uh, like they're not really the I don't know. It's weird that they didn't haven't bring up the stack wipe thing because I'm pretty sure they know about it too. Yeah, I mean they they. They must. I mean, Anything specifically that you saw that's interesting? I see that they um, they did Polynesian no, I mean, troops. Pog. <laughs> <laughs> where, where in the Polynesian? I think they just changed that. There were already Polynesian troops. I think. No, yeah, there already and, is, and they're they're. Yes, they just uh, changed some peeps, which is okay, just to balance with other with natives, I guess the most op like uh, vanilla late game pips is the Polynesian ones, but I've never played with them. I never 
like felt so, like them again like pips is never the strongest the polynesian one on late yes game? they have the best pips in the late game <laughs> okay let me check that because i didn't know this yeah they do the for some reason Charlotte? they do they do they have be they have the best like starting tech 19 i think uh <sighs> tech 23 i think is better for other pips for, in the most part but yeah tech 19 they have they're really good and then tech 26 are again really good the muslim dwelling infantry yeah it's one more more offensive morale pip for uh anatolians uh it's nerfed and it's the same now they're they're the same yeah they have they're the, the same. same okay uh okay uh ottoman attack nine Ottomans ottoman mamluks get... wars on vanilla would be more difficult for ottomans now so it'd be the same pips even nine so i guess what they're trying to yeah. do is trying to make all the pips the same just varied so they're nerfed the early game um non-western well most non-western techs yeah you you defensive morale pips are always like the best pips i it's still it's been like that for a while people were saying that since they changed a bit how damage works that you know defensive morale isn't that good at the start of i forget which patch it was where they changed pips where they changed how uh you know damage is calculated yeah. uh one of the recent patches is either after origins yeah i think after origins maybe it's or maybe like it was after uh, maybe Lions origins or, or yeah well, well yeah, both they like did that. changes both they did changes yeah um well when the fire and shock peeps affected the uh, added to the morale peeps yeah but the thing is even after that change i still prefer defensive morale yeah um so i still think i personally still think defensive morale in the long term is still the best choice but why just for for to win what battles to win battles yeah. yeah i guess you take more casualties but you win battles like the thing is um unless the casualty difference is huge winning battles is more important especially in yeah, vanilla because you can rush forts with that with very yes. minimal cost yeah, on vanilla definitely. So like winning winning the first initial battles could be really big. It's key. Yeah. And even so it feels like, you know, um having like higher morale is better than having higher discipline. It's unless you have a very yes. big dif discipline difference. Yes, and more on like game with the wipes and stuff. But yeah, in little game it's going to to win you the the, the the battles, which is the important part of the of the war. Of the war, yeah. So what what I saw apart from the infantry piece was the the artillery pips. They changed. Uh, they added two types of artillery on each technology. So we had like tech seven this, and this is 10 the big change. This is yes. like the big change of this is the cannons. For now, the tech seven, ten, and thirteen, they have there, there's two types of cannon. Uh, now that's that's going to happen on every single tech. So sixteen, eighteen, and so on and so forth. And I, I've checked them, and they are quite interesting. Uh, on overall, I would go always with the defensive, I think. Yeah. But now it's always the same. You always have... Well, the only one you have choice is 13. That's the only tech where you have choice in cannons. Yeah, for now. Yeah. For now. Um, no, it's not but, 10 but the, too. But they're adding. They're adding more. But So the thing is, the 10, technology 10 is when you have the Pedrero, which against uh, Shock, it's quite nice, I would say. It's one more defensive for, for shock damage, for shock phase. And I think that's quite nice. And you don't have a lot of uh, base oh, uh, artillery fire. So more pits on, on artillery, I don't think they're going to do much. In fire phase, you would get one defensive plus one defensive on morale. Just two divided by two because just on the back row, you transfer like half the pips. So your infantry in the front row will have one more defensive pip on morale. Is that how it works? Is this yes. new? Is this new, or is that how it's always? This is, no, this is. Uh, this have been always, uh, except for the adding on the fire and morale pips. That's yeah. when. That's yeah, the I know the defensive before. The yeah. defensive morale gets added, but yeah, so the other ones yeah. get added. So, as well. so the okay. yeah, the morale pips from the cannons, you need two of them because uh, it gets rounded down. So it's like okay, I have one. It's half. No, it's not half. It's just zero. Yeah. So you need two, and you have three. It's just going to be one. Uh, but uh, since the last, well, since this patch, the day changed the fire and 
shock adding to morale you can do that so you you can add like one fire defense plus one morale defense and on the on the fire phase you're going to have one more defensive pip on morale not on not on fire so on on fire on fire um uh, it doesn't do shit just the morale um defensive which is nice it's it's going to add, uh, help you win the battle indeed and for example in tech 16 you get you would get like the infantry on the front row would get like one defensive pip on fire and one defensive pip on morale and one defensive pip on morale with the shock phase so you have to add the, the defensive pip of of fire uh well on each phase to the morale to see the really the what's important so uh i i would say that the um, the Technologies that give cannons that give you like uh, pairs of defensive think, pips are nice. I think I would always pick the defensive pips though. Like yes. always, always, yeah, always, I mean, always. You prioritize defensive over offensive. Yeah, one more defensive pip on morale and, and, and fire on whatever. It's super important. Okay, your, your artillery is going to do slightly less damage, but your infantry is going to have one more pip that is going to work against infantry and artillery of the enemy. Wow. So as far as I see, most of the pips I've checked, of the new cannons, the defensive, Royal Mortar, and so on, I think I would go always to the defensive, as you said. Yeah, I think I would always go to the defensive. I don't know. So, from my experience, I don't know. I don't have the calculations. I don't have the play tests. Uh, uh, but I always felt like defensive pips are better than offensive. Uh, kind of makes sense because, you know, your regiment strength, uh, you know, you deal percentage based off your regiment strength. So, like, taking less damage means that you yes. do more damage in the long run. Yeah. I mean, so I think the consequence of going with defensive is going to make the battle longer, which is, well, okay, just a result, and your troops are going to resist more. Maybe the army does the same, and their troops resist more. So the battles are going to get longer, I think. And that's going to make the morale reserves uh, the morale taken by reserves uh, are more important on the battle you take more morale damage from the reserves because it's going to get longer so 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 if i have more morale than you uh be, if the battle is longer it's going to be better for me because the morale is going to so i'm going to do less morale damage because i have less offensive pips and you have also less offensive pips so we both have more defensive pips and it's going to get longer, and we will be doing less damage on morale-wise. Uh, Reserves is going to be more important because both both, both sides are going to do uh, defensive. Are going to do less damage. If both sides go have... defensive, yeah, and the yes, battles exactly. last longer, yeah, then morale yeah. morale becomes even more important. Yeah, this is what you're saying. Yeah, morale exactly. right now is becoming really more and more and more important. It went. It did. There was like a patch, a period where morale like didn't matter as much. Like you can be down one, two morale, it doesn't matter, because yeah. you would always lose the battle or win the battle based off of uh, based off of casualties and retreats and yeah. reserves before even morale even got back into the picture. But now they fixed that after Lions of the North, and now again morale is better than discipline for the most part. And now it's going to feel like it's going to be even more important because like you're saying, you will take more the per since the battles, if both sides are going to go defensive because there's more defensive pips and, you know, a lot of players prefer yeah. defensive, the battles will last longer. And if the battles are lasting longer than the reserve damage, you'll take more reserve damage, which means that more morale means you need, you will have better troops in the front. Yes. So that was our general thoughts on the pip changes in EU4. For the infantry, it seems like they're trying to balance more the early game to be more equal in terms of pip count. And they still give Anatolians buff at tech 12, but then they kind of fall off as they don't get another unit until tech 19. Uh, but besides that, it seems like ar across the board, they're balancing out the pip count and changing the pip distributions. Muslim units got a late game buff in terms of pips, very minuscule one, one pip change. Asians got a one pip nerf on tech 19. And step infantry gets a one pip nerf, one defensive pip nerf on 19. Finally, African get two extra pips on tech 30. 
which is probably the biggest buff out of anything, but it's for African and it's at tech 30. So when it comes to artillery, since we can get more morale defense from the defensive option, we should always take the morale defense option. This will give us higher chance of winning the battles, but we will do slightly less damage and that's fine. But that is for artillery. How about for infantry? What types of pips are better? Well, let me ask you a question. So you get two options. One option is 10% more shock damage. And the other one is you take 10% less shock damage. You might be thinking that both of these are equivalent, but that is not the case. If you think they are equivalent, then you would be wrong. The answer is actually taking 10% less shock damage. To prove this, I have a simulation of two armies. Both of them are 20,000 strength. They are equal on every single thing except the stack on the left uh, deals 10% more damage and the stack on the right takes 10% less, less damage. So if you didn't know this about EU4 regiments, the regiment does a percentage of strength based off of the amount of troops in the regiment. So by base, each regiment has a thousand troops when they have a thousand troops they have a hundred percent strength they will do a hundred percent of their damage one one of one of their damage however if they lose a hundred troops then they will do 90 percent of their damage because they're losing a hundred men in that regiment and that happens while the battle is going on while the troops are fighting they are losing strength because of this mechanic if both sides have the same morale, same discipline, same mill tactic, the same combat ability, but the only difference is one takes less damage and one deals more damage. The one that takes less damage will always win. As you can see here, the one that takes less damage after a bunch of rolls, this is if they're getting also equal rolls because obviously rolls also play a factor. But in a, in a vacuum, um, you can see that after a couple of rolls, or well, a bunch of rolls really, because they don't actually do this much damage. This is just theoretical numbers, but they're doing the same amount, right? Um, this guy, 10% more. But you can see that by the end of it, even on the first roll, the one that takes less damage, they have more regiment strength. And as you go down more and more, you see that the one that is taking less damage is actually... Uh, make has the more regiment strength in the end to further prove this i did a simulation in single player we actually did this a couple of times on my live stream but essentially here you have two nations with the exact same quality exact same discipline exact same morale um exact same combat ability the only difference is that ajam does 10 percent more damage and yezid does 10 percent less damage and in game, we get the same results that we get in the tests. Not only does the side that takes less damage win the battle, but they also have more troops. Now, this doesn't really apply to cannons since the regular option has more fire damage or morale damage. And the defensive option gives you more morale protection. If you look at the exact numbers, Tech 16, you're trading one fire pip for more defense, morale defense. And on Tech um, 20 you are trading one defense offensive morale for defensive pip so for that reason when it comes to cannons you always take the defensive option so you can get more defensive morale just to reiterate morale percentage does not affect regiment strength it's not the same as the regiment uh, number the regiment strength but having more defensive morale will help you win battles in most cases the only time that i would take the offensive or the fire more fire pips is if I am on a nation with high artillery combat or high artillery fire um, modifier like Spain. And again, that would only be on the techs where there is more offensive fire and you're not trading offensive mor uh, morale for defensive morale. In those cases, I'd still take the defensive option. Like in tech 16 and 18, you get more offensive fire and you're trading that for less defensive morale so could be better in those cases to take the offensive option 
So overall, what do these changes all together mean for EU4 combat? It seems that morale will become more important because of the cannon change and uh, battles will last longer. And it also means that Eastern and Western pips do not get that big of a disadvantage against Ottoman pips in the early game. Overall, I think that covers all of the, all of the pip changes. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys learned something or, um, you know, maybe if you haven't read the dev diaries, um, you use this video as a frame of reference. Do you like the changes that EU4 is making? Do you think Paradox is going into the right path? Um, what changes would you like to see in EU4? And to finish off, I think, I think, and I'm going to call it here in this video. I've called it on my stream before. I think the next EU4 DLC will be a Middle East expansion pack. You can give new ideas to Arabia, to Egypt, to uh, Formable for Hissen Kaifa. You can give missions for Ottomans, for Room having its own mission tree, Mamluks, for Egypt, for Arabia, for Nejd, for Persia. They all could use mission trees. Um, it would be so cool if Hissen Kaifa had a mission tree and a formable. Like imagine you could reform the Ayyubid Caliphate and it wouldn't just be called Hissen Kaifa. That's one of my biggest problems with Hissen Kaifa. You can rule all of the Middle East and your name will still be Hissen Kaifa, the fort name of your original province. But anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.